Catabatic wind is basically any wind blowing down an incline. So, for example, winds flowing from high elevations of the mountains, plateaus, and hills down their slopes to the valleys and plains below. And the term catabatic is actually derived from the Greek word katabatikos, and that means going downhill. There are a couple of ways that catabatic winds can form. The most common way is during a calm night or very early in the morning when the highlands radiate heat and are cooled. It's the coldest part of the day. And the air in contact with these highlands is hence cooled as well. And cold air becomes denser than the air around it, the warmer air around it. So as those temperatures drop at the same elevation, thanks to gravity, it therefore begins to roll downhill. So that downward flow is what a catabatic wind is. And this can definitely be enhanced during the winter months with snowpack terrain because that of course would yield even colder surface temperatures. Catabatic winds can also form when a cold front blasts through the higher terrain. Catabatic winds are a fairly frequent occurrence in Antarctica where you find elevated sheets of ice. But a little bit closer to home, you may have heard of the Santana winds in California. This is a catabatic wind event. The Santanas result in incredible heat spells in Southern California because when the air descends, it warms. And the more ter terrain it descends, the hotter it gets. So once it hits the sea level in California, it can get very, very toasty. We're talking about temperatures that get up into the 90s or the triple digits during a Santana event. There are many regional names for catabatic winds, though, such as the Chinook in the Rockies, the Bora in the Adriatic Sea area, or the Mistral, one of the more famous events that can happen out in the French Alps. Catabatic winds occur all over the world, though. All you need is higher elevation, so mountains, and plateaus, and hills. Catabatic winds can travel at a variety of speeds. Now, most of them remain below 12 miles per hour, but they can sometimes reach hurricane force strength, winds in excess of 74 miles per hour. In fact, back in November of 1962, a wind gust of 106 miles per hour was reported out in Lethbridge, that's in Alberta, Canada, due to a catabatic wind event. Well, not all catabatic winds result in a huge temperature spike, but um, a lot of the times they can. And within minutes of an arrival of a catabatic wind, temperatures may climb over 20 degrees Fahrenheit in just a matter of minutes. Temperatures can increase dramatically as the wind descends from the slopes because of what's known as compressional heating. On January 22, 1943, in the Black Hills, for example, a layer of shallow Arctic air was hugging the ground from Spearfish to Rapid City in South Dakota. And at about 7.30 a.m., the temperature was measured at minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit in Spearfish. Well, when a Chinook wind arrived, within two minutes, the temperature was 45 degrees above zero. So from minus four to 45 degrees. And that 49 degree rise in two minutes set a world record.